everybody. Uh, welcome back to my Wheel of Time reactions. We're on episode two, season two. Uh, I'm Cat Swain. I've been Cat Swain on the internet for ever. I mean, since there were forums about the Wheel of Time, I reckon. Um, I probably lurked, so you might not know the name. Uh, I'm going on straight from having watched episode one straight into episode two because, I mean, they're out, so I'm going to watch them. What am I hoping for? I definitely want to see some Rand. I want to see some Matt. Uh, I want to I want to see the story pushing forward. I, episode one had a lot of story building, and that's fine. Um, and, and you know what, I suppose for the non-book readers, it was probably quite useful to help explain a lot of those things as book readers were just kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, we know all this. Um, and so getting that balance between book readers, non-book readers is going to be important. Did it captivate me though? Did it, or, or even the non-book readers, like I'm looking forward to watching the reactions of non-book readers to actually see what they think. Did it captivate them? Did it make them want to see more? Um, I felt like there was no secrets or surprises in that that makes you go, where is this going? Well, what story are they going to tell here? It just felt like, okay, the end of season one was apparently five months ago, but... Oh, was it actually? Maybe I got that wrong. Because if they've been in the White Tower for five months, they would have also had to travel from Faldara to the White Tower, which maybe took, I imagine they didn't go via the ways again. But maybe it's, um, maybe you say it took them a month or so. But still, that's only potentially six months. Maybe, did they have to stick in Faldara for a while? Maybe, but then I can't see Perrin having stayed. Like, if they're on the hunt for the Great Horn, they wouldn't have stayed in Faldara for a long time because that would have just let Pen and Fang get further and further away. How is he getting the letters to people? How? Because, I mean, in the books, it's always a rider takes them, or pigeons. It's not like Perrin's got pigeons hanging around. And I can't, I wouldn't have said he's got a lot of money either to pay for the post. It's one of those logistic things that you just don't really think about. You just go, oh, yeah, I'm going to accept that letters can get sent out really easily. It just doesn't work like that. But anyway, <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I just want to see the story get a little bit action now. Episode one of season one, I mean, it was setting the tone and, and helping to introduce you to the characters and to create that homely feel like you get in Lord of the Rings before everything goes to shit. That certainly wasn't the case for episode one of season two. It was suddenly explaining a lot of the things that probably should have been in season one and a lot of just sort of sitting around and reacting to things. I suppose there's a lot of that in the books too. It just didn't feel natural, perhaps, in the episode. Um, but like I said, look, there are things that I did like. There, There are. You know, I'm not going to be Debbie Downer about everything. I'm accepting that there are pros and cons about this and that most of the cons come from the fact that I'm an avid book reader, that I know these books pretty well. I'm not certainly saying that I'm an expert in them and that I remember everything that happens. But I do know most of the events fairly well. Um, and the great thing about being part of the community is there is always somebody who knows something that you don't know. So yeah, all right, look, let's just get straight into um, episode two. Let's see what they've got to offer. Okay, starting with some rand. Great. All right, we're back to dream sequences. Cool. Oh. 
shirtless rant all for it. Run. Whoa. Another nightmare. Whoa. Whoa. What? No. Really? Really? We're jumping straight. What? No. Oh. Oh, no. No. I, I know we aged him up. I should get to work. But no. You still owe me women board for this month. Oh, how rude. Don't be late. I'd love to charge you interest. Ew. I don't think he's in the mood, honey. Oh. I won't be. Your rates are too steep for me. Whoa. Is she an innkeeper or a prostitute? That's that's not Celine. I do enjoy him being shirtless though. That's that's lovely. But uh, really, that's how we're jumping into the Celine storyline. I mean, I know we said changes, but is there anything from the books in these? It's a walk. Don't touch children. Why has he shaved his head? Oh, okay, he's making friends. Like, why wouldn't Rain try and be away from everybody? If he knows he's dangerous and is going to go mad, why would he... Oh, he's, he's going straight to carry him. I don't remember him walking quite like this before. Why is everything so blue in Karrion? Does Maureen wear blue because she's of the blue sisters or because she's from Karrion? Okay, he's in. Mm, Alright. Why would he work there? Why would he do this to himself? You are my red elf. Okay, random. Have we lost the opening sequence? It was so beautiful. I mean, it really didn't make sense for the series, but it was beautiful. Oh, jeez. They don't look good. You're in luck. My sister and I have decided to accompany you. <laughs> Is that luck? Yeah, she doesn't think so. I assume you'll head to the White Tower first. I have been exiled from the Tower. I know. Yeah, neither of them look ready to ride. Clearly nothing has changed. What? We need to leave if I'm to make it to the docks before sunset. I am not we. I've lost too much time already. Where exactly are we headed? The White Tower. <laughs> you can't. Have Tomas ready my horse. You're still weak from the healing. And yet... And I don't want my saddle to slip. Oh, rude. And yet... I mean, she got stabbed by a trollic blade. And straight away afterwards... Was ready to go and shield Loghain. Um... So, Trothic Blades, easy. Murderal Blades, very difficult. I mean, kind of, but it's not like Trothic Blades are easy. I don't know. I don't know. There should have just been a little bit more of a healing process from the Trothic Blade wound for this to make as much sense as it needs to. Yeah, I'm with you, Lynn. Smack her. There's definitely not as much spanking in this show as there used to be. <laughs> it used to be the one. I don't mind the change of Elias from Hurin. I, I miss Hurin, but I acknowledge we can't have every single character. Get across here. Something doesn't feel right. It's too quiet over there. Bill, do you stay with the horses? As you wish. Oh. Yeah, because why have Loyal do anything? Okay, that is a sword on parents' hap. 
Suddenly he's allowed to have a weapon, but not his weapon. Oh, really? And, and what, he knows how to use that sword? We haven't seen him being trained in sword play or fighting. There's a woman in that house. Are we gonna... Oh. Why would he go first? He's not a soldier. Okay, okay. I don't hate how they're doing this. But that's not... Who's that? That's a lot of flies for... I mean, I'm Australian. <laughs> Useful. That's a lot of flies. You know the difference between vision. Whatever you're doing to me, I want no part of it. Oh, why would Elias back down like Doesn't that? that way. Why does he think he's doing something? Since Fane and his friends left in a hurry. <gasps> he was alive when he did this. When they started, at least. You think it was Pat and Fane? But there's no reason to think it was. Back to the horses. There is no reason to think it was, but I like attack. that touch. Ew. How did you get past the guards? The guards let me in like they do every day. I you like know, his charm. Once a blade master, always a blade master. Oh, is this how we're going to learn? Even if I have misplaced my Heron Mark sword. I'll try to sneak my sword in again sometime. You can teach me if you want for me. Right. Okay, random. Take your pick. Random, but all right. Cutting the clouds. Kissing the apple. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Just like the glory days, right? On. I mean, it's Next time. I'll be ready nice to see Rand being caring. That's lovely, but... I, I miss the fact that Lan's not teaching this to him. I like that he's getting taught, but I miss that it's not Lan. Very clever, Leandrin. But how does she know about breakthrough fever? Took a lot of practice. When you become accepted like that young woman, you learn from each of the Arjas about their speciality, their purpose. Exploring our great library with the Browns, learning statecraft and... It's not quite what accepted do. ...in the Greys. And when you come here, the Yellow Sisters teach you that healing, it's a response to the symptoms and disease you're presented with. But my Aja, we stop the disease taking root in the first Ugh. place. My God, the propaganda. The channel are not a disease. Yeah. I've asked the mistress of novices to turn your studies over to oh, me. Jeez. I heard you're not allowed to teach novices. A beautiful dog, though. <laughs> you should at least not. I might have been naked. Oh, you're wanking off. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay. We were all wondering how this actor was going to go. We liked Barney. Yes, it's almost there. <laughs> you really think they'd do a better job at cleaning up before we arrive, don't you think? Mine was full of rubbish too. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, hang on, hang on a second, look. Elaine is many things. Bit pretentious, definitely snobbish, nose up in the air. We got that, right? That's clear in the books. Um, <laughs> she's not this bad. She is not this bad. She comes into the White Tower and she's not like, whoa, this is not good enough. Whoa, hang on a second. Oh, you know, no, that's, I mean, this is clearly Elaine. This is so clearly Elaine. I'm loving it. I'm living for it. Um, do I hate Elaine? Do I like Elaine? She's got her moments, right? <laughs> um, 
but this, this is like, whoa, a whole new level of, surely her mother was preparing her for this? Surely Elida was preparing her for the fact that she would have so much less as a novice. Um, and in the books, doesn't she, isn't she already in the tower when Egwene arrives? Or they arrive roughly around the same time, I, I thought. But I know, I know, I feel like she does, she's there beforehand, so this is, all right, fine, storytelling, blah, 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 blah. Um, but this is, no, this is a whole new level of snobbyishness that's not Elaine. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, no, I don't think I like this. But I like that this is clearly Elaine. <laughs> like, mm. This is lovely stitching. Um. It's Western Andorran, isn't it? The two rivers. Apparently everyone knows where they're from. So much for hiding that. Why are you smiling? I'm Elaine Tricant. Daughter heir of Andor. You were my uh, subject. Awkward. <laughs> I'm a Gwen Alvia. They say that some of the greatest pairings in the history of the world were formed between novices in adjacent rooms. Katsue Maladrin and Eleanor Katard met just like this. Oh, okay. Don't you wonder what the future might hold for us? Oh, come on. She's charming. In a weird way. Aaron Var couldn't join you? There are some things best left between sisters. <laughs> What Leandrin's proposing is just... Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I mean, I love Alana and her waters. I love how they're so in tune with her. I do love that. And they're starting to feel a little bit like... servants. <laughs> they're, they're a little too... <laughs> currying a favour kind of thing. Um, mm. I am enjoying their dynamic, though. I would like more. And I, I like that Alana's getting such a prominent role. <laughs> I am enjoying that. Even though she clearly doesn't show up for several books. But clearly another change <laughs> that Rafe wanted, must have liked her character. She wasn't even allowed near novice. And now she wants Nynaeve to go through the arches. Nynaeve is the most powerful channel Whoa. that this tower has seen. A thousand in the years. Yes. Everyone keeps saying. She still can't embrace the source unless she's angry or afraid. And barely even then. She could die in the arches. Many have before her. Oh. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on. Waters telling, interfering in Ice and I business? No, that, that's not okay. Uh, why is she allowed, why are they allowed to speak? Um, obviously, Alana allows them to have a little bit more freedom, although I don't necessarily remember that from the books. Um, is that a change I hate? Eh. But to have that much interaction with the Shirium? Mm, I'm not so sure. And also to be so invested in Nynaeve. I mean, obviously they spent a lot of time with her, but Waters, I mean, we saw that with Lan and Moraine when Nynaeve spoke back to Moraine. Um, and Lan was like, well, okay, this is I said I business, I'm out of here. And if Lan's not going to interfere, why would these two interfere? Hmm, it's odd. So what is the agenda? And I think maybe if there'd been some chat, you know, th there's that point where in the books, Maureen tells Ran not to trust any I said I, including Alana. Maybe if we'd gotten something of that already. I don't know. Mm. The lack of trust between sisters isn't quite clear just yet. It's a little bit there, but it's not quite there. Did they not get any classes? It's all just cleaning. Oh, are you going to follow her? Oh, that's going to announce your presence. 
<laughs> she should have heard that sound traveling down the hallway. You're not being quiet. Really? Sounds of horses? Are horses being kept down there? Okay. Aren't you coming? I prefer to sleep under the stars. Suit yourself. They're not your pack, you know. Mm. The Shine Irons. No, but loyalists. Three fates hunting a single Aes Sedai. The eye of the Dark One is upon you, sister. Did you not think we would ask why? Mm. I assume it's one of the boys you brought back to Tarvalon last autumn. Whoa, how would she know? The dragon. What? Okay, okay, this is what I wanted from episode one. Really? Subtle boring. Who else knows? Whoa! You could have at least pretended. <laughs> I wanted to know how far you'd go for the dragon if you're to lead him to victory. Oh. Okay. My sisters wish to cage the dragon to clip his wings. Okay. There are books in the tower that may prove useful. D books Prophecies that you also have. speak of Tome and Head, of Whoa. battles in the sky, a sword of flame and the branded hand that wields it. Okay. I will find them. So the question is, did she bring those up because we're going to get them? Or did they put those in there as fan service for all the things that we want to have that probably aren't going to happen because they're going to go, oh, you know, the prophecies are old and who knows if they're true and you know, blah, 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 blah. And all of them can be interpreted the right way, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> I'm sick of lip service to fans in TV shows. You know, they put things in because the fans want them, not because they make them part of the plot. They become, like, side points, like, comments like that, or they become jokes. Um, and it actually gets me really angry. Be true to your fans because they are your core base. You know, be true to the people who know the story and are wanting the story and enjoying the story. Don't just don't just pretend for our sake. That that makes me so angry. So, all right, we'll see. We'll see which of these happen. Rand, is this really? Is this really? <sighs> We've seen nothing of Tavern either. That's the funny thing about people. Yeah. Ew, when yeah. things get bad, we want to be alone. The truth is, it's when we need each other the most. Your face, when Rand. It's my internal face. <laughs> what the? Like <laughs> you. Okay. Kinky. No. Ugh. I've barely spent a few hours in Tarvalon itself. Freen is to die. No, you that's not how that works. You didn't need me to show you around the tower, did you? The random mention of Catswain earlier? I mean, I love it, but... <laughs> I do love Cat Swain. I, I'm one of those people. I love Cat Swain. Oh, is this her man? Oh, Nynaeve's still following. You're gonna be in so much trouble, Nynaeve. Don't get so close. My love. Whoa! Be subtle! <laughs> I said be subtle! The Crimson Thorn. I, 
I thought you were trying to kill him. I thought he was a man who could channel Walk away from this place before I do something we both regret. Oh, my neighbor. Idiot. You think I don't know that? You'll still be hurting when you go. You need to enrichment to help smooth the inflammation. Get out! Whoa. I kill you, you get out! <laughs> get out! You stupid girl! Whoa! Get out! Get out! Whoa! Whoa! Like, what is. Whoa! What is this scene? What is this about? I'm so sorry, my, my boy, my beautiful boy. Oh. Oh. Why? Why? What is this shark doing? Well, that hand's not spasming anymore. Just pointing out. Oh, shit. <laughs> what? <gasps> Men! So you're the possum that's been scratching at my wall. So what did you do to piss off the blonde? Nothing. Ah, is it a sex thing then? Yeah, she looks like she'd be into domination, this cheap bands. <laughs> nah, luckily I'm not her type. I think she prefers a man dead. <laughs> I might have you in here. <laughs> and that was the end of his sex life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this shows being a bit more raunchy uh, than the books. <laughs> how about you two? Whoa! You've never told us the story of how you met. Any old warder can protect you from a trollop. But the right one can protect you from yourself. Subtle. On the nose. <sighs> as subtle as this tower. But why do they want you? Are you going to tell him? I see things. Yeah. If I keep drinking this, I'll see things too. <laughs> what kind of things? Glimpses of the pattern. Like the future. That is way less interesting than I expected, to be honest. I'd hope for <laughs> at least a murder or a secret <laughs> affair with a nice girl. What's in the future isn't interesting to you? Absolutely not. No, I would rather not know the shit that's headed my way. Okay. That feels like Matt. <laughs> His voice does not. <laughs> I mean, yes, but ugh, ugh, I, I know they aged them up. But ugh. when I'm with you, I can pretend you're here. I can pretend I'm normal again. Uh, what? It's more than pretending. You can't. That does not make people feel welcome. She looks way too old for him. Old women, more math speed. Though. Remember? I'm going. She's not doing anything exactly. But I guess that's the problem. <gasps> oh. Protect me. Which she's always done. Whether I want it or not. Uh. But where is she when I actually need her? So sound really carries in this place, and yet. Unless she tries. There's lots of cases where it doesn't. The more she gets ahead. I am daughter heir to the most powerful nation in the world. 
<laughs> oh, no one likes I know the braggart. Jealousy looks like. But Gwen, I have nothing to say to you. It's not a Gwen, trust me. The Andrins are die. If this is about early, if I could take back what is about to be offered to you, I would. But I've already set the wheels in motion, so here we are. Follow me. Um, don't follow her. Then shut your door. Just tell me where we're going. Oh, honey, you don't question. I said I. It, uh, it doesn't make sense at this point Whom in the way they're telling the story. Sister. One who comes as a candidate for acceptance, sister. Is she ready to face the archers? She is ready to leave behind what she was. Okay, I like the ritualistic feel of this. The twisted arches. Oh, it's one of the arches broken. Or two of them are. Lan, are you snooping? Yes. <laughs> Lan. No. Nothing comes well of snooping. Oh, jeez. I should have sensed the fades were coming. Hmm. You haven't any other time. I should have. I'm sorry. Not all throughout season one. You will go to the tower, and I'll continue alone. No. No. I'm not leaving you. I was wrong, Lan. I was wrong about everything. <laughs> well, that's not Marine. <laughs> the last battle's coming, and we're already losing it. The Quaindia that broke at the eye of the world, that was the seal keeping Ishamir imprisoned. Uh, okay, okay. The Forsaken. We didn't defeat the Dark One. We set his strongest lieutenant free. You and I walked this path together. Every step of it. Okay. Every choice, every sacrifice. We've never walked this path together. You've never seen the forest for the trees because I've never shown it to you. I know what you're trying to do. You can't push me away. Yeah, finally. Rand's alive. Ooh, okay. You okay. Good. No. Yes. I said he was dead. You failed me. Without Verin and Adelais, I would be dead. Oh! 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 What I'm a... not letting you walk away from me again. Oh. Yeah. Alana will see you to the tower. No! I'll take your bond by force if I must. I swore myself to you because I trusted you. Whoa! Whoa! Because whoa! We fought. We whoa! Were together. Equals. No! Oh, no! Oh, no! I said I cannot lie. So tell me the truth. We were never equals. <sighs> no, our waters just aren't. No, this no, no, this is all too early. All too early. Oh no, 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 no. I no, I do not like this. No, this is. random buckets lying around. People aren't that messy. Come on, Perrin. Oh. Oh! Sean Chen have arrived. Wow. Look at... Ooh. What is with all the shirtless men? I mean, I'm not complaining. This is lovely. What? That's really what Sean Chen do. At least we're getting some action that I wanted. 
Safety barriers. Safety barriers. Grab, whack. Here we go. Here. I mean, it's clearly not going to do you any good. Come on! Come on! Grab an axe! Or a hammer! That's neither of those things. Okay, okay, we're finally seeing some loyal stuff. <laughs> okay. Dude. I mean, I don't know who you are. <sighs> You're whacking a metal helmet. Oh, look at Loyal. Yes, we're seeing the rage. Uh oh. Taking cover certainly didn't help. But the bull gag? Really? The bull gag? Man, pity that you can see the wheel tracks. <laughs> what? I mean, I know the Shinarans are. Not Shinarans. Um, Sean Chen. I know, <laughs> but really a small village like this and not a big city? Why is Ishi there? I don't think they needed the fingernail tap to know to bow. <laughs> Okay, 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 hang on a second. Hang on a second, because we know, as book readers, spoiler, if you don't want to know, just skip ahead, um, <laughs> we know that the Forsaken are having a bit of a whisper in the Sean Chan's ear. We know that. This feels a little too overt and in your face. So if you're a non-book reader, Surely you're then just going, oh, okay, Sean Chan bad because in liege with uh, the Forsaken or what they might still be thinking of as the Dark One. Um, and I bet there's a lot of non-book readers who are very confused about why Rand, Perrin and Matt were seeing the Dark One in their dreams who then became Ishi without clear explanation of what he was really trying to do. Um, but this just feels so on the nose because the Sean Chen aren't just pure evil. They're not just on the dark side. But like any other culture, they have people. And people are flawed and some are on the good, some are on the bad, and every culture believes that their culture is the right way to do things. But this now just seems like, oh, okay, so the leader of the Sean Chen, as we know them at this point in the show, um, is being led or in league with Ishi, so therefore they're just automatically bad. <sighs> I'm worried we're not going to get the nuances and the layers in this show because of how quickly they're having to explain some of these plot lines. I'm just a little worried at this point. So anyway, we're going to play. We're almost at the end of the episode. We'll see how this goes, but I don't know. All right. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, 
his friend. Why is everyone wearing blue? Okay, so this is how he's going to meet Loghain. And he's also wearing blue. Jesus. Your usual orderly had a terrible accident last night. <laughs> so really? we'll be taking care of you for the next few months. Why are you staying in one place this long, Rand? Thinking you're going to get lost in the city? I have a feeling you and I have a lot more in common. Have you been pushing for this? Has Rand been pushing for this? Did he know who was in this courtyard, in this garden, and was looking? I, oh, I don't feel like that's what's happened. But who knows? Who knows where this story's going anymore? <sighs> All right, so he had a blade master start teaching him some of the forms. Didn't really get to see much of it. Certainly never got to see him actually use a wield. Oh, 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 use a sword, sorry. Um, and what would have been nice was a scene showing him try and remember these steps and to practice them. That would have been really nice. I would have liked that. And now he's going to have his teacher in the one power. Does that mean no Asmodean? Well, I really, yeah, I've, I've debated with some friends about this. Does Loghain as a teacher make more sense than Azzy? Um, I liked what really was the dichotomy of Asmodee and teaching Rand and, and the subtlety and the layers again that it brought to the story because it is an interesting situation and, and so now we're going to have Loghain instead and obviously Rand yeah Rand was not surprised to see Loghain in that garden he was not surprised okay so he's been I'm guessing this is what he's been doing for a while he's been angling for this but why would the White Tower send Loghain here this does not allow them to study him it does not allow them to study him. He is too far away. Karian is too far away from the White Tower. So this makes no sense, given that Sawan said that he is to be observed and to be studied. It's also now, theoretically, a year. Um, less than a year since Loghain was captured. And uh, they should he should not be surviving this well. I mean, in the White Tower, in the books, he's he's almost like a skeleton of a man. He's lost the will to live. That was not a man who's entirely lost the will to live. Going mad, yes, but lost the will to live, no, because he's cut off from the one power, so he should not be quite that cognizant or interactive perhaps is the better word um and engaged <sighs> and interested he's definitely interested in rand all right so what happened in this episode and do i like it where do i see this story going I mean, obviously the Great Hunt is the core plot that makes the most sense. And we've now just seen our Shinarans and Perrin and Loyal get captured by the Shawn Chan, quite brutally invading army. Why are they attacking a small town like that? That's unnecessary. Big city, maybe. But you attack, you know, you attack the local governing centers first to take on a small town again that's what is making this world feel so small Kyrian feeling big but what would have been really good is like an overview of the city i do like the fact that they've shown you know the lower and the upper gates and that you need a pass to get through i think that's quite cool um but there's so much of the storyline that's just being missed. Like, how was Rand getting that job in the first place? How did he meet Selene? 
Um, anyway, let me stay on one palette at a time. Sorry, Perrin. Do I like Perrin's journey in this? All right, so we had a little bit of an interaction with Elias, which was cool. So we're starting to see some of that connection. I really like the way they're doing the, um, him having a vision, but the whole wolf brother thing isn't about having visions. It's about getting information from the wolves. Were the wolves there to witness exactly what happened? Um, you know, I, from what I remember of the books, it was more like a, I don't know how to describe it. I, I think it was Rand that had the vision. It was more like a, a bubble of a memory kind of thing. So is that what Perrin had or was he actually, I mean, it certainly wasn't implied. Elias was like, no, 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 you'll have vision. So uh, I, I, ooh, I don't know that I like this. I don't think I like what it's implying. Um, loyal, again, isn't being underutilized. He's not contributing anything. What is actually the point of Loyal being there at all? He is not adding anything to our understanding of the world. Um, he is not really being active or engaged in it. I, I don't get the point of having Loyal at all if they're going to underutilize him this much, especially given that they said it was so difficult to do any of the special effects that he really needed to be the loyal who was from the books. Could they have done without him entirely? Yes. Would it have caused a massive uproar in the community? 100%. But to have him then and not use him is really disappointing. He wasn't used in season one either. It was absolutely pointless. Um, except to go, oh, you're an Ayoman from the two rivers. You know what? Most of us could have worked that out. It, even the non-book readers, there were enough, you know, <laughs> clues to go, oh yeah, that color of hair, you know, it's the one thing that can help you decide where somebody is from. Right. It wasn't subtle. Um, so that's disappointing. Perrin's journey is feeling a bit slow. Matt, again, nothing really happened with Matt. He met Min. That's great. But Matt and Min, why is that relationship happening? And now Min's had a vision of Matt killing Rand and stabbing him with the ruby dagger. Why? Why? What are they planning there? And why? I I I don't get it at this point. Um you know like I said in season one there were all these changes and you know some they made sense and some they didn't simply because the payoff wasn't good enough um and maybe this is a you know wait for the payoff kind of moment but it's just so radically changed I have no I, I cannot predict where they might be taking this anymore I, I just can't. Um, so we'll see. I guess we'll see. I do like men. A little bit sassy. It's kind of cool. Um, again, being underutilized. That's okay. You know, she's still just a side character. Hmm. Um, Celine. <laughs> Look, I know they aged them up, but would Rand really have jumped into bed that quickly with her? Hmm. Even aged up. I mean, if he still can't forget Egwene, what is this? Is this a commentary on men? <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and Rand clearly lost control of his powers when he attacked that guy. And this is why he needs Loghain to teach him. 
but he should be worried about going mad. That was the whole point of him leaving his friends behind. And now he's put himself in the middle of hundreds, if not thousands of people, and he's not worried about going mad around them. He's literally working in a madhouse. Is he working there in the hopes that they'll pick up his madness quickly so that they can just shove him in one of these rooms as well? I don't get it. Um, okay, Egwene. Egwene's whole storyline really was meeting uh, the daughter heir, Elaine. I really liked Elaine. A little bit too pretentious at the beginning. Um, but I like her. She's got a charm about her. She actually has a charm. She's She does have that queenly feel. You know she's going to be able to pull that off. I like how friendly she is. I like her smiliness and that she just wants to be friends with the grain. How cool was it back in the day when you could just go up to somebody like on the school playground and just go, hey, want to be my friend? And suddenly you were friends. Easy. Now as an adult, it's bloody difficult to make new friends. Everybody's already got friends, so they don't have room for you. Um, so I, yeah, I kind of miss those days when it was very easy to make new friends. Um, other than introducing Elaine and a Gwen having a bit of jealousy about Nynaeve, which is terribly misplaced and really unnecessary, um, there wasn't much more to that story. Nynaeve obviously had a bit more of a journey. She's about to go through the arches, do her accepted test, following Leander and oh, what a disaster. And so unnecessary. And I don't like the fact that Nynaeve hasn't been pushed immediately to go through accepted because right now it makes no sense that she's having her accept accepted test because she's done nothing to earn it. You know, the whole point in the books was that she basically never became a novice. She went straight to accepted because her power was already far beyond that of novices. It wasn't going to do her any good to be in novice white. But she was. For the show, she was put into Novice White, which means that there had to be a reason to push her forward. The only reason we've got to push her into Accepted is so that Leandrin can teach her. And there is zero reason for Nynaeve to want Leandrin to teach her. Why she is even listening to her, indulging her, is ridiculous, given that in Season 1 she said, that woman's a snake. She knew she couldn't trust her right from the get-go, yet now suddenly she's hanging on her every word. Leandrin is not that seductive. She is a hammer. <laughs> she's blunt force trauma. So Nynaeve should be smarter than that. I'm I'm liking some of our side characters, so Varen. Shirium, you know, I'm liking their inclusion. I like the fact that they're there. Um, I like Alana. I do. I like Alana. Uh, and and they don't have room, all right? They don't have room for those characters to be much more than just little commentary here and there to help push a story forward. And they're doing an okay job. It's not amazing, but they're doing an okay job with it. I'm still liking the setup of scenes and the scenery. Um, the attention to detail is quite good. I'm liking costuming. Um, Maureen looks haggard. I like that. <laughs> Don't often get to think of Maureen looking haggard. So I like it. And yet I'm still annoyed about why it's happening. It's... <laughs> It's not normal. <laughs> I am not loving the Maureen storyline, to be honest. I I want to strangle her. I want to spank her. <laughs> it's causing unnecessary friction and using up storytelling time that they just don't have to use up. And to achieve what? So that Maureen can push Lan away because she's worried about his safety? I don't get it. 
it just doesn't seem genuine to me. And why would he have to go back to the White Tower? That also makes no sense. How is Maureen getting messages to Alana? Why would she bring Alana in? Maureen in the books is suspicious of Alana. So it just makes no sense to me. It's it's complicated at the moment, my feelings for this. It's my books and it's not my books. Season one felt more like the books. Even with the changes they made, it still felt like the books. This one feels like they're snippets of the books. And only snippets. And I'm not a book cloak. I don't think this has to be word for word. I don't expect every single character to be in there. And I don't expect um, every event to be showcased. I know that characters are going to not be in it or be combined or will die early. And I get that. I, I acknowledge there's going to be changes. But I need those changes to make sense. And I need them to stay true to the plot and the feeling of the books. And I'm not sure that we're there in season two. I feel better about it, at least in, say, the first six to seven episodes of season one. And look, you know, episode eight we know was a disaster because of COVID. We also know that the book ending of Eye of the World was a disaster. Um, I don't hate it, hate it, actually. Um, but this was the show's opportunity to actually do something really cool with it. And they just didn't. COVID-related or writing-related, who knows. But season two, I'm two episodes in, and the only plot that I know is going somewhere is Perrin. Perrin and Loyal. Right? And the hunt for the horn. I don't see the end point for a grain and naive. I don't even see what motivations Moraine has at the moment. And she said she's loyal to the dragon. She also let the dragon fuck off. <laughs> so how's that for loyalty? Um, she obviously knows where he is because it's Moraine. Um, but that mo oh. I mentioned that one of my favorite things was Varen coming in with a Ooh, surprise. I know what's going on. She's not actually hitting that balance of like airheadedness, no stuck in a book kind of attitude that she as a brown is supposed to have. And then, oh, bam, she's actually aware of the world. That's not coming through. So she had the reveal. She does know what's going on, but it felt, throughout the episode and throughout episode one she was she was paying attention she was aware and she knew that Maureen had a purpose and so it didn't hit in the same way I think and that's a shame so yeah I'm I feel like I need to watch these episodes again and I will 100% um because I'm also going, oh God, I've never done a reaction before and I better say things and I, I better, you know, have something to actually talk about and respond to. And, and maybe that's pulling me out just a little bit. Um, so I will probably watch episodes one to three again before I watch episode four. So hopefully I've got something to talk about. And obviously, like I said, <laughs> my brain's still not functioning. I've only been awake for like nearly five hours at this point and I am not a morning person. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, look, I'm going to leave that there. I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys thought and I'm looking forward to watching other people's reactions and seeing where the community is. I've been avoiding some of the community's uh, tweets and, and videos. I even missed the Dusty Peel reaction um, and deep dive into these first three episodes because unfortunately I had to work yesterday so I couldn't watch them straight when they came out. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what the community's talking about and where we're sitting as a community. Are we liking these changes? Is it feeling good or are we... 
more disappointed than we were with season one, which is going to be a problem for the show if we are. But I'm also looking forward to seeing what the non-book readers are saying. Are they loving it? You know what? I think they're probably going to be. That's my guess. I'm I'm putting out my prediction there. Um, I suspect they are because there is some engaging points in these shows, um, in, in these two episodes. And they're getting so much more information than they got in season one and understanding a bit more of the motivations and the politics and, and just the world building. And I think they're going to like that. Uh, but we'll see. So I will see you in episode three, which I'm just going to go straight on and watch now. <laughs> yeah. Bye.